Michelle, have you, have you met heroes? Yeah, I have. Uh, well, funny you should say heroes, because I did for a little while in a past life put on very big um, concert tours for big people. Um, the Stones, Madonna, world tours. Um, people like the Cranberries in South America, Rod Stewart um, and David Bowie. David Bowie did, um, when he had the album out, Hunger, um, did a one-off gig on the South Bank in the Royal Festival Hall with Jonathan Ross as a DJ. And um, I'd met a few people. I don't know if I can say. I don't want to sort of... I think you have to be careful. If you have people on pedestals and then you meet them and they're tired or they've had a bad day, I think they have to be really mindful of how they are with you because you mention that to somebody, they remember that, they tell the story and they get a reputation. And yeah. so Brian Ferry was very disappointing to me. Phil Collins, I was organising his tour, was very, very uh, rude. Um, really? And um, at one stage, it was quite a famous case, Rod Stewart was not allowed in the um, royal enclosure at Ascot because he had jeans on. And it was covered in the evening standard. And um, let's just say for politeness, he was having a bad day. Uh, he just decided he didn't want to do his tour on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday in Ireland. And the logistics for me to call off the trucks going across the channel yeah. to um, uh, the Irish Sea, rather, to um, Dublin, um, the support acts, Paul Young, the catering, the lights, um, oh. And then you had people, um, disabled people coming from all over Ireland um, in coaches, looking forward to seeing Rod Stewart. Did you remind um, him of all this? Well, it turned into a very big case for the company because mm. Rod Stewart said, I've got adenoids and I can't sing, I've lost my voice. And oh, so yeah. legally, because of the costs involved, um, uh, we, we spoke to his doctor in Harley Street and we could hear him in the background <coughs> laughing. And so, it, it yeah, it was that was disappointing. Now, I'm sure I could meet him today and I'd get him on a bit different day and he'd be fantastic, mm. you know. So you just have to be mindful, as we all do, that, you know, a same, same for, you know, John, John, you know, and Mike, that you meet that person and if you're you're tired or frustrated or whatever that's how you are is how they remember you but the other but thing is could, they, i think they yeah. tend to believe their own publicity yeah, yeah. And I, right. I was they've very, seen this icon and they think it's, and it's all yeah. i was very nervous to meet david bowie because i did have him on a pedestal um on all sorts of levels creatively and musically and um even the people that he plagiarized i like you know so um, and he was absolutely charming, and he had great teeth. I've got to tell you, he did. <laughs> they were great. Teeth. But, How uh, do you know? <laughs> 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 well, but I you know, the happens. thing is, there, there's nothing worse than meet, meeting a hero that no one's heard of. I mean, my my, my, my hero is Robin Williamson out the Incredible String Band. No, oh, yeah. no, no one's really heard of him, but mm. I met him work with him, live with, live with the band for three years, and you say Robin Williamson, they say, oh, what, the comedian? Yeah. No, the bloody chap out the street. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's awful having a hero that no one's heard of, you know. Mm -hmm. It's most bizarre. Yeah. But like I say, it is, it is. yeah, we, we do set them up. I don't know who it was mm -hmm. that said, I like to put women on a pe pedestal just high enough so I can see up their dress. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but... Um, it was very rude. Whoever said that. Um, <laughs> what about, so? So just going back now, we, we've gone through uh, so, uh, you know disasters and stuff. Highlights. Let's do highlights. Otway, what what would be besides nearly killing yourself on whistle test? What 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 what's a highlight for you? Uh, what about what about the uh, the round the world tour that never was? Just, just uh, think, uh, what about that? That, that, that was a, such a huge. That was a huge disaster. Um, I think we had a bit one highlight. I think um, just after really Fee was in the charts, um, we, I closed off the town centre and um, fifty thousand people turned out to, um, to 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 see me pose basically. Mm. And, uh, wow! 
Yeah, and yeah, I, I, you know, I, I was always regarded as a bit of a loony. In, which um, town? Which town Satan was that? Pardon? I vouch for that. <laughs> which, which town Satan was that? Aylesbury. Aylesbury, right, right. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. So, um, yeah, so that that, that 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 was a good pose. That sounds that, great. That, yeah. That that's hard to talk. Just quickly about John's um. Uh, around the world tour um, I mean John can tell us about it but he rang me up one day and said I've decided to uh, do, a, do a tour around, around the world for all my fans um, and the long and the short of it was John that, that John was going to hire a, uh, this big plane to take all his fans around the world he rang me up and said well I've got the plane I've done that I've got the jet he said mm. now the hard work starts but John that was a pretty crazy thing to do yeah but even by your standards oh yeah yeah no, that is, i mean it was horrible because he just uh it, but you know it, the the problem was we um we nearly funded it we uh we basically nearly had enough people to come on the airplane to go around the world and circumnavigate and charter our own jet and we're always that close it was just too close to say um to sort of like knock it on the head but never quite got over the line and so it just kept going on and kept going on. And we only needed an extra 20 or 30 people, to, you know, to actually make the thing work. God, uh, what would the ongoing cost of that been if you'd have flown? Just to fly from London to Manchester as an arm and a leg I, I, around I, the world. Jesus. So you're talking about the, over, the, the overall budget of the whole thing, including everybody, um, in, including all the ticket money and everything, was... Um, uh, one point one million, I think. Yeah, I was thinking that. But we, um, but we had sort of like in terms of people who'd, um, put you, you, you were prepared to buy tickets. We had, um, uh, uh, we we got so very close to that. The problem was we were in the end it went down because we we're twenty or thirty thousand pounds short. Um, oh. Yeah, it was just terrible. Um, you should have called me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And I, the thing is, I always think, I mean, the problem was we had a campaign to have a second hit and, I, and, and it worked. And um, the problem with hit records is, I, I don't know about what it's like for you, but for me, they go to my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> very good. And you think you can do anything. And um, it's always very expensive <laughs> to find out you can't. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> But, but you, you've got a loyal fan base, John, uh, John Otway. Uh, and I imagine, Mike, you've still got the legions there. Uh, John, John Altman, what, what happened to you when Nasty Nick went? Did you feel not only a chapter of your life had gone, do you, do you feel the fans sort of said, well, goodbye? Or have you a feeling that they're still there? Or do they make their, their presence known still? I think they're still there because... Um... There's a, a big reaction to it, actually. A lot of complaints that they killed him off. And uh, I've been doing these celebrity video messagings. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done any of those. But, uh, yeah, so I don't have quite, uh, there seems to be quite a few people still are keen to hear Nick Cotton sending best wishes from Wolford, saying, all right, my more, et cetera. So that's, that's, that's quite fun, yeah. What was your reaction, John, when, when you were told that you were for the chop? Did you... Want to stay in, or did you? It was a natural end. I could, I didn't actually see it, but uh, uh no, I, I, I thought about it quite a lot. And they were going to do it anyway. That's the thing with soap operas, you know. I said to Jim Brown, who plays Scott Cotner, uh, maybe uh, uh, you know, I should go against this. And she said, Well, you might as well come in and do the scenes because they're going to chop cut you, cut you out anyway, you know. So, uh, I just, oh. I just had to go along with it. Yeah, I think I see the producer. Dominic Treadwell Collins when he wants to register a complaint. <laughs> and I went to see him and he said, no, no, we, we, we think we're going to go ahead with it. So, yeah, I did actually think, well, I thought it would be quite nice if he'd um, still, uh, you know, even you know, these ageing villains in the East End, you know, still sitting in the yeah. pocket. How long did you do it for, EastEnders? Well, could you believe it? It was about 30-odd years, on, on and off. Oh. I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I, wasn't in, uh, I wasn't in there for uh, all that time, but I was only, only in there. Like you said, I probably made a bit of a mark with the character. Yeah. And for half that time, so I'd come out and I'd do stuff like, I did Chicago the Musical on the road and all kinds of other things, you know, No One a Night. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it was like, um, 
It was actually it was quite quite healthy to come and go and not be stuck in there. Not financially, but artistically, it was good to come out and, and be able to do other work and some TV as well. You wanted to know my uh, favourite gig of all time, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has to be um, a tribute, and and yeah, John, yeah, John Michael, and these guys, Libra and Stoller. I used to see. Oh wow! I used to see their credit going round. I bought a single. I, I, for some reason, I thought they were two black guys writing this, a lot of this music, living in New York. I, I really did. I don't know why. Just the way they wrote. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realise that they're two Jewish guys actually. Um, and I didn't know what they looked like, you know. But for some reason, with the the the, the, boy, the, the stuff that they wrote seems, you know, quite sort of soulful and, and, and you know, it was. Um, an amazing gig. It was a tribute to them at Hammersmith Apollo. And I was, that one must have been fantastic because they wrote so many oh, massive was, songs. And I'm an honour to meet them, you know, for, for the younger members of this group. You know, they wrote, you know, Heartbreak Hotel, so loads of stuff for Elvis. And I actually sang Trouble with a really good band, you know, a hand, yeah. hand, hand picked to chaps, you know. Mm. And uh, I sang Trouble and I, I made my entrance walking down at the centre aisle of, of the Hammersmith Apollo. I asked if I could be flown in, <laughs> but I wouldn't have a centre around in a long black leather coat, flanked by all these uh, these really hard-looking doormen, smoking a cigarette, walked onto the stage, put the cigarette out, took the leather jacket off, and it was like... Oh, yeah. You keep that going as long as you want, really. And then I just launched into the song, and, um, yeah, what a buzz that was. Uh, yeah, that was, my, that was probably my favourite gig ever. Fantastic. And an honour to... We we'll actually get up and sing in front of these two absolutely totally legendary composers, Libra and Stoller. God bless them. <laughs> I'm sure they're still around, aren't they, Mike? And then I think um, was it um, what, what, one of them? I think I think they've both gone now. Aren't they? I'm not sure. One of them. I think they have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, one of them I did a uh, a tribute to in the West End. Um, that's when I, I met Adam Faith again. I first okay. met Adam Faith when I did the uh, jukebox jury. And he was on the jury, and I was coming out from to vote, and he voted my record a hit, and it, and it got into the top ten. But I met him at the, in the in Shaftesbury Avenue, and uh, I think it was Jerry Lieber. Oh yeah, was there, and it was uh, I think Mike uh, Stoller had gone. I mm -hmm. can't I can't remember now. But one of them was there, and uh, he was a great guy, and he was. There was a tribute to him, and he was playing, and uh, and uh, so Adam Faith was um, there, and he was all over me like a rash, which was a surprise to me. I didn't think he'd remember me, you know. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah. yes. But Lieber and Stoller, they just the, the DBs. They really what a, yeah. what, a, what a legacy, you know. The, the music has gone forever. Like yeah. say, with the sort of Lennon and, and McCartney of, the, of New York, in a way, weren't they? Turning them out, one little room up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. You know, really good songs, really. really and good and songs. Who, who can forget Benson and Hedges as well? What? Benson <laughs> Edge, George Benson before he, he had a double act. Before, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> so bad. Uh, oh. So bad. That is uh, appalling. But I thought I'd. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but if I may say on behalf of us all, thank you very much, um, Michelle. Thank you so much for being part. So oh, lovely. Oh, I've loved you. it. It's been a pleasure. It's lovely mm. to see everybody. Nice to meet you, love. Oh, I've, I've, I spoke to you before on a Zoom, you know, when there was yes. like... Um, yes, yes, I remember. You remember, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hi, guys. Hi, Hi, Brilliant. Hi, guys. guys. All the best. Enjoy your nice time. Nice to meet you all. Have a good weekend. <laughs> and you. Need another singer, John. I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.